Okay, here we go. These are the files that you all have submitted for the first assignment, the best shot assignment. You've done a little preliminary editing in it. What we're going to do here is we're going to go through all of these. There are too many of them to do in one module and have you all asleep at your computers. So I'm going to do maybe five or six, somewhere around there for each one, depending on how much work there is to do. And we'll put them into modules in this folder. I really, really, really encourage you all, even if yours are one of the first ones, that you go through all of the modules because I'm likely going to be covering issues that you may not have had in this first shot, but are almost certainly to come up. And I believe it will help you to see the editing techniques for everybody's shot. That's about as close as we can come to simulating this kind of critique in a classroom. So let's dive in. Our first shot is this little puppy dog. Our issue with this are there are a couple of things. They're very subtle. It's a cute little dog. The flower is could be interesting as a frame, but anytime you put really out of focus things that are covering up a main subject, it's just incredibly distracting. And we've got a whole lot of relatively dead space here. Remember, we'll get to compositional elements a little later, but here's something to consider. Lighter areas will tend to come forward and grab your attention. Darker areas will tend to recede. So we have this light area here. We have some light areas back in here. And we have this out of focus thing. And to add a little bit of insult to injury, our poor dog here isn't really all that sharp. So I'm going to deal with those one at a time. What I cannot deal with without a great deal of time is getting rid of this flower. I could go in and take it out and rebuild this background. But I'm just going to tell you now when you're looking through the viewfinder, really pay attention to things like that because this, this blue color is really a pretty color and it's taking away from this neutral earth tone color on the dog. So let's deal with some of the other stuff first. First thing we're going to do is sharpen our dog a little bit. So I'm going to pull this down to make a duplicate layer. We're going to work, in this case, I'm going to work on the background layer. So whenever we're dealing with layers in Photoshop, you've got these two icons, these two bars showing. The highlighted layer is the one you are working on. The one with the eyeball on it, the top layer with the eyeball on it, is the one you are looking at. Now, right now, these two layers are identical. So if I click off of this, you're now looking at the bottom layer. Doesn't look any different because it's exactly the same. So let's go back to this top layer. And I'm going to come down here and show you one of the sharpening routines. As we go through all of these, I'll show you several that you can use. The most common one is to go up to Filter, Sharpen, and then use Unsharp Mask. Basically, the way this works is the threshold is going to tell Photoshop what should it consider to be an edge. Sharpening is going to attempt to make edge transitions more abrupt, and so they will appear sharper. It's not a true optical sharpening. We can't do that. The only place you can do that is in the camera, but we can make it appear a little more. In here, because I'm going to do some selective um, approaches to this, I'm going to tell it sharpen everything you think is an edge so the threshold is zero. The radius is how far out from that edge are you going to make this effect? Well, it's going to create the effect by darkening the dark side and lightening the light side. And if it's too much, it'll create a halo, the giveaway for over sharpening. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep this radius down to about one pixel 
about as small as I can get it. The amount is how much difference in percentage are the changes going to be. How much darker will the dark area be? How much lighter will the light area be? And so I'm going to play with this and see what I can find happening as I move it. Can you see it sharpening? Can you see it getting up there? Let's look at a preview. There's the before. There's the after. Well, this is a lot of sharpening. If possible, try to avoid that much at one time because it's going to build sharpening artifacts. So what I'm going to do is cut it in half. I'm going to bring it down to about 100. Close enough. I'll say OK. And then I'm going to do it again. In the filter menu, anything that you have done, it will remember and it will remember those settings. If I wanted to give it a different setting, I would go down to the sharpen menu and do it again. But I want to repeat what I did. So I'm going to give it another shot and I'm going to give it one more. Now, here's my original layer, soft. Here's my sharpen layer. So I'm going to go up to the top layer now. I want to just sharpen a little bit of it. I don't want to sharpen all of that background edge, all of those edges. I want those to stay soft. I even want the edge around the dog to stay soft. I just want his little face to be sharp. So I'm going to create something called a layer mask. And you do that with this icon over here. If you click on this, it now creates this little thumbnail. It's white. This is the default. And what's going to happen is anytime I paint on this layer with this mask active with a black brush, so I'm going to get a brush, I'm going to make it black, it's going to erase through to the layer below it. Most editing is done with a really soft brush. So the first thing you do is come and make sure that this hardness is set to zero. That's going to give it a very soft edge. So now I'm going to come in and start picking up areas that I want to be sharp, which is right on his muzzle and face. Now, if I wanted to experiment and sharpen up a little of the chest area and this paw, I could. And then if I decided, no, I don't really like that, I can go over here, switch this back to white, paint over what I just did, and bring it back to that soft original. And you can start to see already there's more dimension to this. His face starts to come forward a little bit for you. When you look back at the layer mask, the stuff that you have painted on has turned dark. If it's black, I've painted all the way through it. If it's gray, I haven't painted all the way through. It's not totally transparent there. Okay, so let's, I'm going to take that. And to make things easier for right now, I'm simply going to flatten this image. So I'm back down to one. And then I'm going to make another duplicate layer. I really like working on secondary layers because if I screw up, I just throw the layer away and there's no harm, no foul. What I want to do now is bring this area around him down a little bit. I think I could actually crop it a little bit and it would help. So I'm going to pick the crop tool. Bring this in a little. Maybe just a touch from there. I don't really need all of that out of focus stuff. I'll take that. Ooh, I don't like this, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to come up just enough to get rid of that little out of focus area. Boy, some things are harder than they look. There we go. Now, we're just settling on his face. 
in order to bring that out a little more, I want to vignette this area around him just a touch. So what I'm going to do is take this top layer and I'm going to give it a new blend mode. All of these modes are going to do something different to the way these layers interact with one another. In this case, I'm going to multiply. And what multiply is going to do is darken this layer by about a stop's worth of exposure. So I just turn that much darker. Now what I'm going to do is come back down, grab my layer mask tool again, make sure my brush is black. Now I can come back, lighten him a little. And now he really stands out from the background. If you want to check what you're doing, over here in the history palette is a little icon that looks like a camera. Click on that and then go up to the top of your history steps and you'll see a snapshot. That's where we are now. That's where we started. So we've given this quite a bit more depth and really brought the little critters face out pretty well. Okay, let's go on to another one. So I'll close this. No. This shot is interesting. It really looks like a faded old photograph. When Kodachrome shots and Ektachrome shots made into type C prints were left exposed or left where they could get contaminated, the yellows failed. Some of the reds and blues failed, and what you got was a picture like this that looked like it was pretty much wiped out. The uh, student said that's what they wanted in this case, so I'm going to leave it. But there are a couple of things I want to do to it. This water tower is right in the middle. As a general rule, if you put a main item dead in the middle, the image just goes static. It's like looking at a bullseye. So unless that's exactly what you want, then we normally don't do it. Well, I'm going to solve that with a crop. So the first thing I want to do is know which side actually has a little more interest in it. So how about that side? Do I have a little more to work with here? Or if I pull that over, do I have more to work with here? This would be a photographer's choice kind of thing. I'm going to pull it over to here. And then I'll bring this top down, which is also going to crop out this little area, whatever the story is with that. Maybe a little bit more. And now we've given it a little bit more internal movement um, in the shot, so it's not quite as dead and static as it was before. Stylistically, and this is purely a stylistic comment, all of this washed out area would bother the heck out of me. So I probably wouldn't have treated it this way. But you get to be the artist here. You get to make the decision for your output what you want it to look like. And if this is the effect you were going for, then hey, it worked great. So let's grab another one. Wow, this is a beautiful night shot of the uh, the campus. You did a really superb job in this. There are a couple of things that are a little bit problematic, but they are incredibly simple to correct. If we'd brought this into Camera Raw, I believe we could have gotten rid of some of this heavy blue. This doesn't go black, so consequently, let's make a duplicate layer of it. I think I want to work on the uh, bottom layer here. Now, what I do, remember what's happened is we've used our layer masks. We can then select areas to keep and other areas to throw away. I'm going to work on this layer to try to get rid of some of this blue and lighten this up. That's going to affect the central area, but I don't care because I'm going to keep that area in the top layer. 
So here, let's go into our um, standard color issues. With a photo filter, what happens if we add a little warming sense to it? Oh yeah, you can see we've lost a lot of that blue. We could have done that in a number of different ways. We could do it in curves. There we go. And I'm going to go back into the curves for a total luminosity change and I'm going to take these dark areas here and bring them up. Here's the way the curves dialog works. This grayscale across the bottom. This is showing you what you've got. The grayscale here is showing you what you want to do. So if I want to pick up a tone here and how do I know where that tone is? I can hold down the alt key and click here and on the line, see that little circle that comes up? And it tells me the output there is 31. Well, if I want that to be just a touch darker, but I want the area around it to be a little brighter, I can do that. If I want the whole area to come up, if I decide that's a mistake, if I hit the Alt key, look what happens up here. This Cancel button turns to Reset, and that takes it back to where we started. So we can play a little bit with this and keep what we're, what we're doing. I'm going to bring this whole area up just a little. Now, try this in your film lab with your characteristic curve. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my top layer. Use my layer mask and a black brush. Still low, I'm set to about 40% in here. And I put some of that depth that we were losing in that blue night haze back in selected areas. So now I've created a very different looking piece. Let's do our uh, snapshot again and see the difference. Here's where we are now. There's where we started. There's where we've corrected it. Really nice job doing this night shot, by the way. So here's a nice sunset shot with the Coronado Bridge. The only things I would do with this, because this is a nice shot, it has a nice evening feel to it. But remember what I said about when we were back on that water tower. When you center things, particularly when you center horizons, it basically is telling the viewer that everything above that center and below it have equal interest to you. Is that really true here? Do you want the viewer to pay more attention to this or in this case to this fairly blank sky? So I think I would probably crop this just a touch. I'd come down and minimize a little of that sky. Now, this crop tool is showing a rule of thirds. We're going to get into this in a lot more detail a little bit later. But what you're now seeing is I'm bringing the central portion, the bridge and the boats, pretty much across that thirds layout. And now I've basically told the viewer, this is the cool part, the water, this is what's important. All of this is really about 
the water. If I wanted to vignette this a little, let me show you how to make a simple, almost preset vignette. I'm going to come again, make my duplicate layer, working on this top layer. And now I'm going to select this rectangle tool and I want to set the feather up because I want it to have a really soft edge. My problem is these are very low res shots. If this were a full 300 PPI res shot, I'd set this feather to maybe four or 500 pixels. I really want it to fade off um, softly. Here, because we don't have that many pixels, I'm gonna set this to about 50 and see what we have. So if I draw my rectangle there, now see how it rounded these corners? That's because of this setting. I want it a little rounder than that. So I'm going to try 75. Yeah, it's a little better. Now, I'm going to turn this into a multiply layer. Remember, I did that the last time. But this time, now I'm going to make that a layer mask. Now the problem is, what that's done is make the middle dark and the outside light. So I need to reverse this mask. And I'll do it by pressing Command or Control I for inverse. And you can see what happened. This reversed, and now I've got a nice subtle vignette on my picture. Let's take a look at that at before and after. There's our before, there's our after. Now, if you wanted to play with this for the color, hue and saturation, we're going to pick this color. So, we'll pick our eyedropper here. This was a good bright one. Right there. Now what we can do is make it any color we want. You want to make it look like a blue evening shot? You want to make it really look like you're on Mars? You want to make it look something else? All you have to do is select that. What we can also do is come up here and just change the yellows. We did get a different result because the actual color there was a mix of yellow and blue. Or, I'm sorry, yellow and red. So we can change that. We can change the saturation. Drop it out. Bring it up. There's all kinds of things we can do with this. So, when the next time you're working on your images. Play with that. See what you like. Learn these tools. Doesn't mean you use them all the time. But when you need to, they'll be there for you. Here we have a really nice shot of the Crystal Pier. I love all of these metallic tones that are, that are in this. The only thing that bothers me a bit is all of this blown out highlight along these cloud edges. It would be nice if we add some tone. Here, as we look up in this cloudy area, this is the kind of detail we ought to be getting in here. This is simply an exposure problem. If this were a raw file, we might be able to bring it back. As a JPEG file, we might not be able to. But in the original exposure, really be careful. Look at your histogram. If you've got a big spike, and this would give you a pretty good spike, going off the edge. So just be really careful when you're shooting. These tones are really interesting. Stylistically, I might do a slight vignette on this too, because what I want you to see is right in here. And I might have cropped this a little bit so that I don't have quite so much space over here. But this is a really nice shot. Let me see what would happen if we brought this down just a little bit. Let me 
Let's make this brush a little bigger. And then we'll come over here to the total opacity and we'll lower it a little, bring back the original. So now we've gained just a little bit more depth to it. But our big issue here is this highlight. So be really careful with that. It's hard to hang on to. Here's an interesting shot looking back at the shore. I'm assuming from the uh, OB Pier. There are a couple of issues with one. For one, it's it has an interesting pastel look, but it's almost too much. Let's see what we can do. Number one, before we start messing with tones, let's see if we can get rid of this little thing off here to the side. And I'm going to use the clone stamp to do it. It's set to 87, let's go to 90. If I hold down the Alt or the Option key, you can see the cursor change. It's going to pick up this tone. So I click, let go, and now I can paint that little puppy right out. Now let's see what we can do to bring those tones back in. I could do it simply with or with the normal tools. Let's bring this black point down. Here's where our tones really start. So let's bring the black point down to pick up those. And while we're at it, let's bring the mid-tones down a little bit. That means we can probably pull this back a little. And we're starting to brighten it up a little bit. I have a sense that this isn't straight. I'm not sure that the wave could be throwing off the visuals. If you are showing the rulers, and you can do that by going to view rulers, I usually just have them on. So if you are showing them, then you can click there and drag down the guideline. Now, what we have here is an illusion. The view of the camera is looking at an angle to the shoreline. So what has been captured here is actually pretty accurate. But it makes it look like it's not level. It's an illusion, but it's there. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to do a select all to select the entire canvas. I'm going to pull this side down a little bit so my the base of my houses is on that level. We'll say edit, transform, skew. Pull that down. Hit the enter key. Deselect, I'll get rid of my um, guideline. And now it just feels a little, a little nicer. Again, we have this right across the middle of the shot. So let's see what happens if we bring it down. I mean, this little surfer guy really should be over in here. And later in the course, we'll deal with, so could you move him? And the answer is, of course. But for right now, let's zoom in a little bit and see if we can tighten up the shot. Here's your basic rule when you're getting ready to shoot. You decide. You. You get to be the artist. You have to be the artist. You decide what the focal point is. What is the main subject in your shot? Everything else in your shot should help emphasize and support that main subject. If it doesn't, Get rid of it. If it distracts you from the main point, definitely get rid of it. If it's just there and it kind of dilutes the whole image, try to get rid of it. 
If it's not supporting what the shot is about, then try to get rid of it. The best place to get rid of it is in the capture. From your point of view, when you're shooting, what you focus on, how you aim your camera. Sometimes we have no option but to do it later now in edit. So what I'm wanting to do is try to emphasize this a little bit. It would be nice to give him just a little more room. And I'm going to see if I can do that without making this look too crazy. So I'm going to go to image size, canvas size, enlarge this. It's my height. I want to add an inch. Now, there is a somewhat amazing little tool here called Content Aware Scale. And I want to bring out just the stuff below the surfer. I just want to add a little bit to it, paint. So now, I'll go into Edit, Content Aware Scale. I'm going to grab that. And I'm just going to, oops, I don't want to grab the whole thing. I just want to grab this. And I'm going to pull it down a little. Hit the enter key. I could do the same thing over here to give him just a little more room. I've got to be careful with that because it's going to distort that image. But there are times if you want to add more sky... You want to add sometimes a little more foreground. That's a really easy way to do it. Then what we need to do is come in here and trim out this room we gave ourselves to work with. Okay. okay. We've been at this a little bit. I'm going to give you a break. And then we'll go on to the next ones. So for right now, let's close this. And we'll pick this up next module with our shoreline shot. See you then.